Hello friends, welcome to Squared Plans, where creative planning organization comes to life. I'm Stephanie and today we're going to be doing a flip through of my May after the pen spreads here in my catch all Franken planner. I'll be showing you guys my completed spreads from my multiple planners, faith, health, and my agenda planner, as well as a little bit about my setup and any other questions that you may have, I will be addressing those in the live chat if you were able to join me for the premiere. So as you watch, if you have any questions that come up during this video, please feel free to drop those in the chat and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have, or I mean, they can be anything about planning in general. I am open to all topics, so Go ahead and jump in on the chat if you are able to for the premiere. Otherwise, you can check out what we talked about after the fact in YouTube. So this is my catch-all Franken planner, which I just refreshed for summer. If you missed that video, do go ahead and check it out. I'll have it linked here in the cards, and I will also link it down below in the description. Um, but it was really fun just to you know, revamp my planner setup with some brand new DIY covers, which were actual freebies from last year, but I refreshed them in a different way this year. So you can kind of see how those turned out. I also made a laminated folder, which I've done in the past, but I just thought I would refresh that DIY as well during the summer refresh. And you can check out how I did that as well as just see all the other items I added to this planner along the way, which you will actually see as we go through quickly the planner setup. So I'm just going to go and flip through some of the front sections of my planner and then we'll get to the after the pens shortly. So like I said, this is a new cover that I DIY'd for summer and it is a freebie in that video. So check it out if you'd like to see how that um, turned out, how I made it and then just to get that freebie as well. I made this last year, so I went ahead and popped it in again this year and just love the kind of summer pastel vibes that are here. This is a pocket pages, which if you're new to the Happy Planner, these came out so long ago. They don't make them anymore, but um, it was just a really cool way to add some decorative items to your planner without too much of a headache. I did do a DIY video showing you how you could use a laminated page in order to make your own pocket pages. So if you want to know how to do it, if you really like this idea, there is a DIY. I'll link it down below as well, just so you have that at hand. So anyway, I have my little summer pocket pages page there. I also have my sticky dash, which needs to be refreshed, but um, this one I DIY'd as well, along with um, this like folder pocket and a larger pocket in the back. Got that, I got my pin loop, another DIY project, and my friction pin, which is what I use most of the time in my planner for writing because it is erasable. This one is the knock, which is a little bit of an upgrade from the standard friction pens, and that should also be linked down below as well. I'm sure I'm gonna get a question about these library card reading logs. <laughs> another freebie that I gave away a few years ago honestly in a video i will try to link that one as well if you guys are interested in that but i'm just using that this year to make a quick list of everything i've been reading and it's been working out really good okay so next we're getting into more of the planner setup i've got six tabs here on the side these are the main sections of my planner i've got my inbox at the front which is a getting things done um, inbox from David Allen. It's an insert in my shop if you want to know more about that. I also have my goal section, which is mostly DIY inserts that I made this year. So I have my annual and my quarterly goals here all set up, ready to go. Got my productivity section, which is where I keep kind of my master project list type stuff. So I have a routines insert that I'm still working on. I've got the front and the back, but I need to still do the middle, which will be in a future video. So another DIY project. I also have my Kanban board, which I made last year at the beginning of the year for my portfolio site. 
another big project of mine that I'm trying to keep track of. Then we've got my schedule section, which is where we're going to really start digging into the planner and the after the pins. At the front, I have a year planner set up. I've got my year at a glance, which is, again, this is gonna be mostly inserts from my Etsy shop. They'll all be linked down below in the description, but if you need help finding anything, you can always reach out in the chat or in the comments after the fact. So like I said, this is my year at a glance. I gave away a freebie with my planner setup for 2024. So I just have that printed here on vellum paper. And it's just a list of different holidays so that I can have that at a glance. This um, whole section in my schedule section is navigatable through these top tabs. I use these to go through all of the pages that I need to touch daily. This section here at the very front, which is my year planner. Some of these I don't need to look at every day, but it is nice to have a quick reference tab for them. And so I have that, I have my yearly habits. So this is a printable again from my shop. And here I'm really keeping track of more of my self care, kind of personal care items that I wanna keep track of habit wise and how I'm doing there. So I have that set up for the year. We also have my pride and joy, my future log, again, a printable for my shop. I use this to do all my future planning for the year. It really is very helpful when you are only holding a month or two at a time in your planner like I am, because I have multiple planners here in this one catch-all. So I, um, I keep this for future planning. Anything that's gonna come up, this is where it goes first. And I also have it color coded so I can see at a glance, you know, what it relates to and then kind of quickly look down the list for more details. I do have a setup video on this if you want to know more about that system. Uh, I did it at the beginning of the year. So I have my feature log and then my first page that we'll kind of talk about is my month at a glance for my memory keeping. I've got a monthly layout that I am using in the lined version. So I have a lined version in my shop just to try to keep things a little bit neater. I do a setup video with this every month and so I set this one up for a birthday theme since May is my birthday month. I tried a few different things new to my memory keeping including putting in like some decor really in the midst of the functional space, which kind of worked, but kind of didn't. <laughs> you can see it's a little bit awkward. It did help me kind of be more succinct with my memories that day, but overall it, it was just a fun thing to try out. And I love circle stickers as balloons. That's an old school, a happy planner kind of planning things. So again, if you're new, you may have never seen that before, but that was definitely all the rage back in the 20s. I <laughs> mean, you know, my <laughs> gosh, in the 20s, in, you know, 2020 um, and 19 too, I think. So anyway, um, I brought that back for this spread because I was really light on birthday decor. And basically what I just do is I fill out a small kind of synopsis of my day each day as a way of memory keeping. And then on the back, I am using this notes page as more of like a currently, but mainly for the books that I've read, the TV that I'm watching, and the movies that I've watched as well or seen. Um, I had quite a few things to write in this month, so it worked out nicely, these three big circles. A little bit sparse on the decor, like I said, I was kind of scrounging for birthday decor this time around, but I think that that worked out pretty nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out now since I've already got June in and I'm going to move that just kind of into its storage planner. I'm using the front of my agenda planner for keeping track of my memory a day, months. So it's just right in the front and then behind it is where I will be putting in my agenda months, which we'll get to near the end. So that's it, I've got June already set up. And again, there was a video on that one if you wanna see how I decorated for that. 
And next we're into the first full normal planner in my setup, which is my faith planner. So my faith planner is again, another insert from my shop. This front section is my faith overview insert. All again, will be linked down below in case you like any of these setups. I track here in the habits, my prayer, my reading. I do like a daily Bible reading, uh, morning prayer, my lettering for the verse of the day, which you'll see in a minute, and then the application, which is going to come on the monthly. So I take a kind of a snippet or a takeaway from the reading and I, I make a little application that I can think about throughout the day. Also here, there's a space for a prayer list. So I have my running prayer list here. I also have a monthly verse that I letter in here uh, in this like larger dot grid area. And then at the very bottom is a spiritual currently kind of section where there's a bunch of prompts that you can write in basically how you're doing spiritually for the month. I also decorate all of the spreads in the same theme for each faith planner month. So all the pages you'll see will have this kind of blue and green theme with the birds and the florals and the bright gold quotes just a really fun theme. I really think that this one turned out really nice and it was a great spring theme. So this is my monthly overview. And again, this is where I track the application that I mentioned. Basically, I put in the verses that I read for my daily Bible reading, and then I just come up with a little something to take away and write that in here for each day. So that is how it turned out. My handwriting is not that good when there's not lines. So, you know, some days look better than others and I just want to fit it in. So I don't care too much about how it looks, but I do try to do my best to make nice clean lines, but it gets hard when you're got large words that you try to fit in. And yeah, so I haven't really figured out a better way other than maybe to do a different type of a layout for this application, but for now, this is working out pretty well, so we'll just stick with that. So next we have my weekly pages, which are set up in my quadrant layout. This is where I do all of my lettering each day. So I take the verse of the day that feeds into an app I use called YouVersion Bible app, and I just grab it right from there. I don't have to think about it. And I try to basically interpret somewhat what it's saying through lettering. And that's really been just such a fun practice for me. It's definitely helped improve my brush lettering and my monoline lettering, given me a little bit more creative spark too with some other types of lettering. I really enjoy this process. I think it's really a nice way to kind of marry the things that I wanted to do, which is to improve my lettering and also spend more time in the word. So. That's how I've been using this. This is just the right amount of commitment for me. Sometimes it's a little bit much even when I have a busy morning, but I still try to fit it in whenever I can and stay consistent with it. So this is how the first week turned out. And here's the second week. As you can see, I have been sticking with two colors throughout, just tying it into the theme. That tends to work the best. And this month was perfect because the colors that I picked, these kind of like blue gray and the softer green, those work well as like background colors, highlight colors, but also as um, their own. So you can read the lettering in that color. So some things I think about when I'm trying to pick colors too is to balance it out so I can use the colors however I see fit while I'm doing the lettering. Anyway, like I said, I try to interpret things so you can kind of see what I did here. Go to the next week and talk a little bit about the setup. So I usually set up all the weeks kind of in the same way with similar elements, but only really focusing in on the this week area, giving me plenty of space to do the lettering. And that has worked out great overall. I also did a series talking about how I approach Bible lettering. So if you want to know more about that, I will link it here in the cards as well as down below in the description. If you want to kind of check that series out and just get some more information about how I approach things. 
but yeah, it's just a fun practice. And if you are looking into getting into, you know, like Bible lettering or even lettering in general, you could do the same thing with just quotes. But I really like the fact that I'm kind of marrying my spiritual life with this practice to kind of blend them together and, and help me kind of achieve two goals at once. So I think this is the second to last week. I think there's one more. Yeah. So this one was another one. I really have fun with these sometimes. It really depends on the morning though. Like eh, I can tell like this morning was a little bit rougher uh, and I was struggling too with the brush pens. Um, I often use Tombow brush pens for the color and those are great, but they're a little bit hard for me to control. I'm still really a newbie brush letterer. I haven't done any real formal brush lettering practice or drills, so it is still a little bit more of a struggle for me to get thick, thin lines that are clean and perfect. And as you can see, I just really, I struggle with the looser brush tips of the Tombow brush pens, especially in these smaller font sizes or text sizes that I'm trying to do here. So yeah, so this one was a little bit rougher, but like sometimes I have a really good idea putting it in this like light bulb, talking about the light of the world. And I think those ones come out a little bit extra good. So it just depends on the, on the morning, but there's sometimes really good ideas. Sometimes uh, execution is not that good <laughs> or there's no good ideas and I just kind of run text across the day. This is the last week of my faith planner. And uh, also I think I mentioned that I alternate the colors I usually will alternate the week start color as well just to get a good mix. So, you know, this one's blue, the previous one's green, and it will go back that way. And then finally, on the back, I have started to try to use this page up. I really struggled last year to do it. So this year, what I ended up doing is trying a few things out that were suggested to me. The two that have really kind of worked out for me are writing gratitude here on the back. And this time I did little like speech bubbles to or thought bubbles to kind of just put those into the page, make it look a little bit cuter. I've also done how God is working in my life on a weekly basis. And that also too has worked out nice. I tried to do more of a Bible study situation here on the back page, but it just took a little bit too much effort. Considering all the other stuff that I'm doing in this planner, it was just a little too much. So those other two are the ones that I've been kind of alternating since. And I really, I, I think that that's a nice way to use it. Like I said, low commitment, even though I didn't fill out the whole page, there's plenty there for me and I really enjoy it. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this guy over to its planner. So this is its storage planner and it will hold my faith planner pages throughout the year. It's a hodgepodge planner of old dividers and discs and covers just kind of blended into one. So I'm gonna drop this guy into the May tab and just use it there as a way to keep things organized throughout the year. I will end up removing these dividers after, so it'll just run through the months without any stock. And yeah, that's how it's set up. Let's go ahead and jump ahead to the next planner, which is my health planner. For my health planner, again, inserts from my shop. These ones are a custom spread that I've made with a step tracker and these habit trackers on the side. I also have like a single page month kind of condensed so that I can track my workouts and then also map out my straight training plan for the month. I don't do setup videos on this, so usually I just throw some stickers on and try to make a theme for the monthly pages all at once and this one was a pretty green theme as you can see i pulled out some washi tape stickers as well as some various washies and 
highlighters, zebra highlighters that I used here. I also have a meds and supplements tracker. This is available in my shop as is, and a health symptoms tracker. I take a lot of meds and supplements, so I like to see how that's going. I also have started tracking my mood, sleep, and stress this year, so I just kind of have a quick chart showing like the levels of those items. I also, on this side, have all of my chronic health symptoms tracked out, how I was actually doing each day, and then any triggers that contributed to how I felt throughout the day. Those are in my monthly section. So the first I'm calling my month overview, similar to like the faith overview in the front. And then this one, I'm just calling my health wellness since I don't have a monthly in this planner. So this is the first week in my health planner and I just really went all out with these kind of potted terracotta plants, matched it up with this terracotta colored washi tape from Plenty Thing and I think that really helped you know, bring that color to life. Also did a slight gradient, kind of pulling from the colors within the plants. And I really liked kind of the simplicity of that look. I'll talk a little bit about how I use my setup here on the next one, but this was the first week. The way that I use my health planner, I like to track my stats, which is just basically health stats that I get off my Apple watch. I will track my workouts and then my food log, the food that I ate. And then sometimes there's other things like for this week, or I guess for the whole month too. I don't know if I tracked the veggies yet, but I had goals to increase my veggie intake. So I started tracking that on the page as well. Sometimes I've tracked calories, uh, other items too. So it's just a, another little thing that I might add in to see how I'm progressing health wise. This layout, I really liked I have been in a gradient rainbow colors kind of mood and I just like playing with different stickers and trying to create gradients with various stickers so I think that this one really turned out nice. I make these stat stickers myself. I have a video showing you how you can make your own in Canva if you want but if that's too much for you I also can do custom orders so if you need something like this in your planner you can reach out to me on Etsy and just request the stat stickers that you saw on my video. I'll be happy to help you out and quote you a price. So this was the second week. This was the third week and I got really creative with the mixed media on this week. I had recently did an Amazon haul and I was eager to break out my new stickers. I got a book, I think it's called Atlantis, filled with like sea life stickers and I love them but they all have this background on them which um, is not usually my favorite but uh, it does push me to try different things and so for this one I added in a blended background to kind of melt the peachy tone of the sticker into the background of the page. Loved it. Did some stamping too. Tried out my new stamps and it was like a super fun way to just mix it up again still have a rainbow vibe going on so i've added that in with the stat stickers but still tracking all those similar things with the workout the food log and the veggies as well and this was my birthday week and again i was really hard up for stickers so i ended up doing these circle stickers as balloons and again just bringing back some old school happy planner uh, ideas did a little bit of a better job I felt like on this spread being I added in the little stem here for each balloon in their appropriate color so it sold the balloon idea a little bit better also played around more with that mixed media adding in some blue like they're in the sky and really liked how that one turned out And lastly, we have this one, which again, another rainbow style spread and just mixing and matching. I had some fun cutting up long boxes from the Plenty Thing Pastel sticker book, mixing it in with some larger stickers. I think this was from a Happy Planner sticker book. Um, and then just 
all the other basics that I needed with the food log and the stats. Again, kind of creating that rainbow and a little bit of a pool vibe here too, so that it, it gave those summer vibes. And on the back of my health planner each month, I have this fasting hours tracker. This I've been using to keep track of my fasting hours. I've been trying to do one meal a day fasting. Uh, some days are easier than others, and I really want to increase it to alternate day fasting here in June. So this is just a really good way to kind of keep track and see how I do on a regular basis. And, you know, if I'm meeting the goals I set out for myself. It also makes it a little bit easier to track the time as well. Uh, I really like this insert and it is available in my shop. So let's go ahead and move this guy out and put it in its storage planner. So once again, I have this kind of hodgepodge storage planner where I just keep all the inserts organized with some old dividers and use some happy planner rings and like a cover from previous purchases. So June's already in there. Let's jump ahead to this last kind of tab. I'll just mention briefly in it, I track my weight and measurements for the entire year. So I keep that closed, but then also on the back, I've been tracking my health stats in a monthly format. And that has just been really helpful to kind of, you know, see how I'm doing from month to month, if I'm improving or not, and how to, you know, make adjustments for the next month. And okay, so the last planner we're going to go through is my agenda planner. This planner is an hourly layout along with some of the more like catch-all type items, you know, tasks, to-dos, work-related items. That all kind of falls into my agenda planner. We'll talk about the pages individually as I get to them. But again, mostly inserts from my shop. This first insert is my month overview insert. And again, I styled all of the monthly pages in the same theme. So you'll see this kind of birthday colorful theme for the next couple of spreads. I use the month overview here in conjunction with the monthly goals to create this one spread. Here I keep track of my monthly to-dos, some tasks and, and habits that I wanna keep up for the month. I also have this monthly goals, which I set up each month and I work out four different goals, mainly based off my quarterly goals, but then usually I'll add in an extra for the month um, and kind of figure out how I'm going to tackle those milestones for each month to achieve the full quarter's goal. So that's how I set it up. And if you want to know more about that, like I said, I do do a video every month kind of showing you how I approach my goal setting. So this is my monthly overview and this is just like for scheduling major things that are happening but I also write in kind of things that happen in particular on specific days. Uh, usually something outside of myself like you know like walking with my husband or something like that. So there's that, there's also birthdays and holidays and things like that I keep track on this spread. Um, and then uh, this month I decided just to do a quick summary of my birthday and how it went just for a little bit of fun since I added this large box here into the sidebar. Um, but otherwise it's a pretty simple spread, not a lot going on there. So here we get into the real functional planning space that I use on a regular basis. Again, this is an hourly spread. It's an hourly grid layout from my shop, which is similar to like the Hobonichi style or the um, like Sterling Inc. Uh, common planner, or there's one other one I was thinking of. Oh, Hemlock and Oak also does something very similar. So I really saw those and I love the idea of the way that they had them but they were all in like bound books and I wanted something where I could put it into my discs 
and make it part of my system. So I created this insert last year. I really love the setup. It's working out really nicely for me. However, it is a little bit difficult to decorate since it is so functional. So I try different things each week and just try to see how much I can get away with before it really starts to become a problem in the functionality of the space, but it keeps it fun and colorful to look at. So this week I color coded the days in the main colors of the spread. We have like a peachy tone, blue and a pink. And that turned out really nicely. I liked the variation of colors. Um, also just kind of a simple theme with the florals and the kind of springy colors. Talk a little bit more about the setup here on this layout. So what I've been doing is setting up the main top section for my list of to-dos each day, my task list. And then I usually start my day at 7, although it is pushing into 6, 6.30, 6. So I um, will have adjusted it farther down. But for the most part, um, I start at 7 and then I will a lot of times go all the way to 10. I've been trying to give myself a hard cutoff at nine to make that my downtime since I work from home and I'm self-employed, so it's work all the time. <laughs> and so uh, I've also been tracking my work hours just to make sure that I'm doing a reasonable amount of work hours and, and not going like into 50 and 60 hour weeks of work, just trying to balance it out with other things, life things. I've been tracking to what you know, to do's I have for the week that aren't really day specific. And then I go about in the hourly section tracking what I did each day in like a time blocking manner, which I'll explain in a second. I really like this color scheme, by the way, the peach and the green with a little bit of the script black over it. It was a really good color scheme and I thought it came together really nicely. Um, and these florals, I think, were from the Happy Planner. These florals are from, I think, my uh, previous Amazon haul, and they're just some PET tape um, die cut stickers that I thought I would use up. I tried another purple spread. I tried to pull back though, because I've done purple in the past and it ends up being too much purple. So I thought I would mix it with this more like wine color with the purple and then also like lighter shades. That was better for sure. And just not having it all too much purple, but Still, I think I could have pulled back on the purple a little bit more. I just found that, you know, all purple spreads really are not my favorite. That said, I didn't mind this spread at all. I think it turned out really nice. And I did all those same things that I mentioned, task lists, work hours. I also, like I said, time block. So I pre-plan my spreads using some sticky notes well like task flags i guess is a better word for them and i pull those and pre-plan my whole week out how i plan to use my time and that just gives me a good way to figure out if i'm gonna have enough time to do everything i want to do for the week because it gets really hard when you're trying to do you know goals and work and household stuff and errands and just making time for everything so pre-planning out my week is a really nice way for me to kind of lot time for the things I feel are important and that I want to accomplish and for pretty much every good laid plan there's you know a diversion so after the day is done I will go back and actually write in what I did so I can get a clear idea of how much time I actually spent doing certain things and kind of keep that in mind for the next week so if I know that something took me way longer than I expected, plan extra time for it next week. Or if it's something where I just avoided a certain task, like making sure that I figure out a way to force myself to do it. You know what I mean? Like sometimes like goals, I have trouble like doing some of the hard work. So trying to figure out ways to really get myself motivated to get them done versus trying to do other things instead of, you know, everything but what I need to do, that kind of thing. So this has been really, really helpful for that and helping me kind of refocus my time. This was my birthday week spread. And again, light on decor as far as birthday stickers. So I got 
out the washi tape and did some washi candles, which I had done, I think, a couple of years ago as well. And it's just a really good way to make a birthday spread when you don't have a lot of birthday stickers. And this one turned out super cute. Kind of did a rainbow theme, but I didn't want to do rainbow all the way across. So I just stuck with a gray highlighter, which I think was perfect so that the decor could really shine. I also use a brush tip marker to do some of these headers. So I just write them in manually with my, uh, you know, freehand. And then I also use that same pen to write in kind of the bold box areas of like my time blocks. I've also been trying to highlight the work blocks a little bit differently, try a few different things, which you'll see in the next spread. I do like them highlighted, but some spreads are easier to tell than others. Like I felt like this one was really easy to see the work blocks as opposed to the other blocks, but here it all kind of blended together still, I felt. So I've been trying some different ideas for that. And this one, I use stickers from Liv La Posh. I think I have her Fruits and Floral sticker book. I think that's where that came from. So I added those again on the edges just to not take up too much functional space. Nice lemony, summery spread, kind of into the summer vibes right now. I tried to really block off the work blocks a little bit better, but this still didn't really work as far as calling them out. So I tried it, but I didn't really think it worked out that well, making the work block stand out. So I'm still trying to figure out how to do that so it's a little bit easier for me to keep track of how much time I'm spending specifically on work. But otherwise, everything else is basically there, and you can kind of see how the week turned out. So the last spread that I use is this social media spread. I keep a social media schedule here, which I pre-plan out at the beginning of the month, and then I end up, you know, kind of making adjustments as I go and crossing each day off once I've completed it. And then over here, I keep track of my followers and subscribers on YouTube and Instagram, as well as like the monthly growth of both of those channels. And then I have a, a quick little setup here for some weekly to-dos that are related to social. This is a pretty customized spread. This is just a simple monthly sheet, which you can get in my shop. This one here is also available, but I've kind of customized it, like I said, to be specific for me and added in these like social stat charts and things like that. So I do do customizations on inserts, especially the ones in my shop. So if you're looking for something in particular, feel free to reach out and you can talk about it and see what we can come up with. So I don't really use that back page at all, so I don't bother decorating it. And that is basically it for the month. So we will pull out May. Drop that into its planner. Back to the one I had at the beginning for the monthly memory keeping. And I'll put this away in its May tab. These dividers are some cardstock ones I made oh, ages ago before, way before, before COVID. <laughs> so I'm just reusing them here as dividers. And again, those will get pulled out when we used later down the road. But there is that. I've already got all of the new months in, obviously, since we're already into June. So we're all set there. Again, just using those tabs to help me navigate through these sections. I've moved my cleaning chart for June into the back here. I should probably put it in a different spot, but um, I usually keep it in my productivity, but I want to get back into the habit of this monthly cleaning chart. I had kind of ignored it for a couple of months during our move. So I put it here just so that I would be a little bit more into my flow. I have that here to remind me to do some cleaning each week. And then I also keep all of my extra like tabs and things like that, my task flags on this kind of clear divider sheet that I made a long time ago. So that's where I keep it when I'm getting ready to set up the week, I can pull from here and it's just easy to grab. On the back is where I kind of keep what uh, videos I tend to do pretty often and then some ideas for future videos. 
And okay, so at the back now we're into my last planner, which we won't go through, but I have in here. This is my finance planner or my budget planner. It is available in my shop if you're looking for a budget planner. And I have done a setup video at the beginning of the year if you kind of just want to see how I'm using this insert. But I don't share my actual numbers. So this one is just in here, but I, like I said, I don't share that. And finally, we are into the fifth tab, which is my reference tab. And I'll just briefly go over the setup. I have four bottom tabs down here below to separate the four major sections that I keep for long-term storage here in the planner. I have a personal section, a business section, work, which, so business is my Etsy shop, work is my freelance design work, and then I have my social media tab for ideas and stuff for social media. So all of those are in there. I did do a um, summer refresh with some different dashboards, which I'll let you guys check that video out if you just kind of want to see how those are set up. And then we have one last tab in my six tab setup, which is my collections tab. This I've been wanting to kind of beef up, but I have nothing yet really for it other than just a simple sheet placeholder of books that I want to read. So I have that here and it is um, all that's in there for now, but eventually it will be filled up with collection style pages. And finally, I have a pocket folder, which I just made in that refresh. Again, you might want to check it out with some work related pages in there. I have my second DIY pen holder here with my four color friction pen and at the back of that, just some extra paper in case I need to write some notes or make a list or something, and my back cover. And that's it, you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below. Also too, go ahead and leave me a comment if you'd like to get in touch and think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, if you'd like to see more of my videos. Thanks again for all of you who were able to join me for the premiere and were um, along for the live chat. I hope you got all of your questions answered. And again, feel free to reach out to me, not only in the chat, but also down below in the comments. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may still have, or if you were unable to join, that's a great way to get your questions answered. So that's it. Have a wonderful rest of the day, and I will see you next time. Bye!